Hi, I'm Cody Baccia. I'm Kristen Peritini. I'm Tyler Grimes. And I'm Amber Torres. And we are Baccia and Company. And today we will be performing for you a scene from the complete works of William Shakespeare, Bridge, written by the Renew Shakespeare Company. Please be advised this piece does contain an asterisk for some questionable materials, so if you feel you might be defended, you may leave now. And we proudly <coughs> present District 10, Troop 647. One. We hope no one was too offended by our previous performance of Titus the Andronicus. It was a bit bloody and gory. Shakespeare tended to go through a bit of a Quentin Tarantino phase as a young writer. But nonetheless, we shall move on to our next piece, the dark and brooding tragedy of Othello, the Moor of Venice. Speak of me as I am, and not extenuate the one who loved not wisely, but too well. For never has there been a story of more woe than this. <laughs> That was Desi. Oh, Desi! <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, well, I'll play some lights. Um, so we left Adam on his own to do some research, which clearly was a problem because he must have looked up the word more. That was something tying a little boat up to. Now, in this context, it's completely ridiculous because in the 16th century, the word more referred to. <laughs> well, I feel like a dork. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize, but we will not be able to perform Othello for you today, since well, the part of Othello was written for a black man, and obviously, I mean, I think it's all for a Basically, we're hawkies. <laughs> so we are, so due to physical limitations, we'll have to move on to our next piece. Whoa! Basically, Shakespeare stole everything he ever wrote. <laughs> <laughs> 
little harsh. He's a good guy. Come on, let's use a different word. Distilled. All right, well, then he distilled four or five of his funniest gimmicks and yelped it. Sixteen comments. See, essentially, Shakespeare was a formula writer. Once he found a gimmick that worked, he would use it. Over and over and over again. So the question we have for you, Mr. Shakespeare, is why did you write 16 comedies when you could have just written one? So, in answer to this question, we've taken the liberty of condensing all 16 comedies into one play, titled The Comedy of Two Well-Measured Gentlemen Lost in the Wives of Venice on the Summer's Night. <laughs> or, symbol I'm in the Temple of Love, for as much as you like it, for nothing. Or, the love boat goes Go to the A comedy. A comedy. Let's start it. Act one. A Spanish duke swears an oath of celibacy and hands over the ruling of his kingdom to his evil, tyrannical twin brother. He then sets sail for a golden age of Greece after a living magical fleet with three sets of beautiful, identical twin daughters. He then, while sailing along the coast of Italy, comes across an evil tempest throwing him overboard, where he then stumbles upon a cave where he is molested by a creature, a fish, or both. Act two. The long lost children of the duke's brother, also who has stand on three sets by them at the twins, have just arrived in Italy. Though still consisting of the inner nobility, they are ragged, destitute, penniless, flea infested shadows than they once were. Under these extreme circumstances, they are forced to borrow money from a Jew man who tricks them into placing their brains as collateral alone. Meanwhile, the six brothers meet and fall in love with six Italian sisters, who, three of which are sharp tongued detectives from shrews, while the other three are submissive, they're little bimbos. Act three! Woo! The identical twin daughters of the Duke walk ashore on the shores of Italy and change their identities to men. Then they come pages to the shrews and match them to the Duke's brother's sons. Then one night they take all the lovers into a nearby forest, and with the help of some fairies, they squeeze the aphrodite juices of the hermaphrodite flowers into the shrews' eyes, causing them to fall in love with their own pages, who were in turn the Duke's brother's sons. Then the queen of the fairies falls in love with the donkey, and they all have a big bisexual animalistic orgy. <laughs> <laughs> Messengers on a misguided act of loyalty run into each other, hand the messages to each other, and kill themselves. Meanwhile, the man fish and the duke arrive in the forest disguised as Russians, where for no apparent reason they do a Tim and underwater version of Uncle Vanya. Act The duke's command the fairies to right their wrongs, and all of it was going to smack down, knock them away in the mud. And in the fight, they rip off each other's clothing and reveal female genitalia. <gasps> the duke recognizes <cracked> <laughs> 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 One of the bimbos grows up to be Vanna White. And they all get married and go out to dinner. Except for this minor character in Act 2 gets eaten by a bear. And of course, the Duke's children, who are unable to pay back the mean Jew, are forced to give themselves the bonds. They all live happily ever after. Peace! Peace.